Weekly update, first things first, the box, the Dybbuk box, as you saw earlier this week to recap, uh, stabbing and burning it, I haven't noticed anything strange since then. No um, unusual misfortunes, no doors closing, uh, no auditory hallucinations, nothing visual. No strange dreams that seem to stand out from my normal dreams. Nothing unusual basically has resulted from the stabbing and burning of the box. Second thing to mention, a few of you have, before I get away with that, um, no new results as far as the psi wheel is considered. I cannot move the wheel without bumping the glass, basically. Probably not a surprise to most of you. <laughs> but a few of you have expressed interest in the wheel. Uh, one of you sent me a message, a couple of you actually sent me a message asking if I could explain how a person can make a wheel for trying it themselves. And a couple of you also expressed interest in wanting to have a shot at the wheel uh, over video, I assume, uh, as in I set up some kind of live stream. Obviously there's some latency, but it's almost live. And you attempt to move it yourself while I record, uh, which sounds interesting. That might be later this week. Hopefully later this week. Getting those things out of the way quickly. Something very awesome arrived today. Well, Technically, it arrived earlier in the week, but we're opening it today because I wait till the weekly updates to do the sort of mail corner session, session, section. I won't spoil it and read what it says, but it came via air mail, royal mail. Has a customs declaration on it right there. And comes all the way from the UK. I'm going to try to be gentle in opening it up. I guess I can already tell some of you this comes from Rothier Magus. I've always said Magus. Some people say Magus. I hope I'm getting your name the way you like it said. Since he and I have communicated in emails, but uh, never in audio over voice. This is very well packaged.
just a quick hold up of each thing that's in here. This is a wand, which we'll get to in a moment. This is a scroll. This is kind of his business card of sorts. It says magic, Yaganyan's Wizarding World. I know I'm mispronouncing that. Bringing the magic to you, Rothier at yahoo.co.uk. And Rothier spelled R-O-T-H-I-I-R. Call now for the ideal gift for that little wizard, little witch and wizard in all of us. And there's a number. And it says about me, I do custom made wands for those who practice magic, those who wish to learn, and for those who are simple admirers of the Harry Potter films and books. Wands, books, robes, and other costumes and spell scrolls handmade with you in mind. And then there's the URL, facebook.com, Yaganen's Wizarding World, Y-A-G-A-N-A-N-S, Wizarding World. Wizardingworld.co.uk as well as mentioned on there. And on the other side, it says Wizarding Tools. There are a handful of items that I make for those who are willing to buy them that are all custom made to suit you. Wands, robes, cloaks, basic costumes, journals, spells, scrolls, spell scrolls, and sigils. Or sigils. Goes both ways there. About me. Uh, same part as the front. The same matching about me section. Next here. is a piece of paper at first glance, but I believe it's actually an enchantment. I'll explain as I read some stuff here. I'm not sure which piece to start with. There's actually, this is kind of cool, there's actually wax on each of the strings sealing the scroll. I think the wand was packed on top, so let's start with it. First, I'll let you just check it out. That's the handle here, I assume. I think I'm right on that. It's very, very cool. I know a couple details about it because I did communicate with him on what I would prefer in a wand. Uh, <clears throat> but since there are some things with it here, I'll go ahead and read it to you. <laughs> I have to hold it like this, I feel like. Ye old timey bard. Rules of wand lore. There are a number of rules that affect the use of a wand that cannot be altered. Though the wand is made from inanimate materials, such as wood, they still have their own power. The wand obeys the will of the magician who is using it until the will of the magician violates the wand law. The laws of the wand are as follows. The wand chooses... Oh, number one... The wand chooses the wizard. You cannot just walk into a shop and pick up a wand and expect great results just as you cannot simply pick up a branch off the floor or cut off a tree and expect the same thing. You always get the best results when you choose a wand or branch that calls out to you to use it. Not every branch you see can be used as a wand and not every wand in a shop can work for you. The only way you will get the best results from a wand made by someone else is if that wand is specifically made for you. Number two, wand and its maker. If you get a wand that has been made for you by someone else, then do not think that you can then use that wand against them. The allegiance of a wand is always first and foremost to the one who made it. If another person gets a wand from you, then you are safe in the knowledge that if they try to use that wand to curse you or send any ill will your way, then it will not work, as the wand will resist their bad intentions and turn against them. The same will happen if the owner of a wand tries to use it against its maker, then the owner will get the backfire of that ill will. Three, 
wand and its owner. If you steal a wand or borrow it from another magician, you can still use your magic through it, but not the same degree, not to the same degree as if you as you can if the wand was made by you or for you. If you then turn the wand on its owner, then your curse or any ill will spells will backfire and be turned on you. However, if the wand is taken by the maker, then they can use it against its owner, as the bond between wand and maker is always stronger than the bond between wand and owner. However, if a dryad was placed within a wand by the maker, then it will be set to work only for the maker and the owner, and anyone who tries to use it will get no results. Four is the law of allegiance. Every wand has its own allegiance between itself and its owner or maker. There are three ways that one can gain the allegiance of a wand. First, craft. Making a wand with your own power and energy by imbuing it will make the wand's ultimate allegiance to you. Two, inherit. If a wand is made by a magician, then it can be inherited by a member of that family by direct descent as the magic in that bloodline will share a similar signature. This means if a magician dies, then they can pass the wand down to their oldest magician children and then their child after that. It can only be lawfully obtained by a magician's sibling if the owner dies without any children. 3. Win. The last W-I-N is what I mean by win. The last way to gain the allegiance of a wand is through combat. If you use your own power to overcome that of a rival magicians when they are using their wand, then the allegiance and power will bend in favor to you. This does not apply when used against its maker. To then fully strip it of allegiance to its owner, then you must fully remove the power and essence of the owner and replace it with your own. Next is Wand Mastery. If you make your own wand, then you don't have to worry about wand mastery. However, if you buy a wand that has called to you or have one made for you, then you will get great results, but not the best results. After a time of steady use, the bond between a wand and the magician will increase. When the bond is at its peak, then this is called wand mastery, and is when you will get the absolute best results with your spells using that wand. This bond is solidified when the wand holds a dryad spirit, and then cannot be broken, not even by the one who made the wand. Next is related wands. There is a strange effect that takes place within wands when the wood to make multiple wands is taken from the same tree. When this happens, they are taken to being called relatives. When two mon wands are made from the same branch, then they are referred to as being twins. If a wand is turned on someone who is using the twin of your own, then the two wands will cancel each other out even if one magician or wand is stronger than the other. When two wands are made from the tree but not the same branch, then they are referred to as being siblings, brothers, or sisters depending on who they have aligned themselves with. If a wand is turned against a magician who is using its sibling's wand, then the two wands will cancel, each other, uh, cancel out each other's powers, and the winner of combat will depend fully on which magician has the more power and knowledge. This cancellation will happen regardless of one wand being more powerful than another. When a wand is taken from a tree branch and another from the same tree's roots, then they are referred to as mother, root, and child branch. If these two wands are turned on each other, then the mother wand will always overcome the power of the child wand, even if the child wand is made to be more powerful. The next part at the end is called wand keeping. To take care of your wand, then to be sure to work with it as often as you can, and always be sure to not break it. When a branch has been imbued with magic, then it becomes naturally stronger, but be sure to keep it safe and out of use of other people. Always respect the wand, and if it has a dryad spirit within it, then communicate with it on a regular basis. Prior to a popular wicked doctrine, you never cleanse a wand, as to do so will strip it of its power, and you also never have to recharge it after it has been used, as when the power of a wand is depleted, then it will recharge itself at the same rate that you recharge. It will also recharge itself much faster if the wand holds a dryad spirit. Not sure if he wants me to open this yet. I know I could elaborate on some of this based on the emails between him and myself, he and I. I think I'll save the rest in here 
since it's actually more applicable to a direct experiment actually doing it and recording myself doing it because what's left basically involves enchantments not that I'll be doing anything more than using the enchantments he's made but to elaborate a little more on the wand based on what you've just heard I was told he did place a dryad in the wand and uh, for the most part the only real advice I gave to him in relation to the design for the wand was that I've always felt uh, more of a peaceful sense of spiritual connection to bodies of water than any other kind of physical region land formation or general daily occurrence that comes to mind so he was trying to incorporate and I think he did a good job uh, the sense of, of water somehow into the wand and it's also from a willow tree there's a little more and I'll give everyone a longer more detailed list of the wands description in the next video but we're at 16 minutes so I'm going to jump over to the ESP predictions to get those done before we hit 20 hopefully uh, thanks again to Rothy Omegas this is very cool and everyone can expect to hear a little bit more about it in the next update or over the course of the week. Okay. Last week, session 19, the last session before 20, which will decide who wins the next shirt. The high scores were Dina Bella and Linus J77 who I did get your message about you changing your Facebook name to uh, Sharona Poran, I think is how it's pronounced. Uh, so don't worry, your previous scores will be attributed to your new name. Which reminds me, if anybody does change their name on their Facebook and, I mean, YouTube account, and you're trying to win the shirt, be sure to let me know. Otherwise, I'm just going to jot it down like you're two different people. That doesn't help either of us, because it screws up the data on my end, and it gets you out of the running for your previous predictions counting towards your shirt score. On to the envelope. That says B T E T X P A T. Three T's. I think we've only had one occurrence of three of the same character. Session 20, your predictions. At a quick glance, I can see a really bad medium is the only person who guessed uh, predicted B for the first character and they did not predict T for the second character, so there are no perfect matches this time. No perfect eight hits. I'll go over exactly how many hits from who. And this will be session 20, so next week, session 21, everybody will get to find out who is getting the next shirt. Which reminds me, if you check out the Facebook I just put up a picture that I was sent by Cassiope the winner of the very first shirt via her unusually high scores in the predictions every week and speaking of these predictions if you're wondering what the hell I'm talking about what I'm talking about is an eight character alphanumeric sequence it can be letters or numbers I generate it from a website called random.org and basically after generating it, I have a friend seal it in an envelope. Here are some samples of what an eight character alphanumeric sequence would look like. They seal it in this envelope. It goes up there on top of that glass goblet sort of thing. 
and it stays there all week while everyone is allowed to make predictions. That's what's going to happen as soon as this video is over. A friend is going to seal another character prediction in there, eight character alphanumeric, and it'll stay there till next week. At which time I open it up and check it against all the predictions that I've received from you all over the course of the week. Whoever has the most hits, most characters correct, don't have to be in the center of the correct place, just have to be correct. Whoever has the most out of each five weeks of sessions, five trials, they get a t-shirt. It's that simple. All you have to do is have the most hits. And you have to play to win. And if you're the only person playing, you're guaranteed to win. So basically, the more you play, the more you're going to win. But after you win one, I'm taking you out of the drawing just in case. You know, to motivate other people. Basically, you get the idea. Send in your predictions. Doesn't matter how you get how you get your predictions. Anything works. It doesn't matter, for example, if you If you meditate for like two days straight and all of a sudden the vision just pops in your head of these eight characters, or if you do some kind of blood magic ritual, or I don't even care if you're just you're watching anime and the numbers jump out to you when you blink. Doesn't matter how you get the numbers of the characters, because there's letters in there too. Doesn't matter how. All that matters is that you send in your prediction. And then it'll get checked, and who knows, you might win a shirt like the one that Cassio Pay is wearing in the picture on the Facebook. Go check it out. And thanks again to everybody that does send in predictions because over a long course of time this data could be really, really valuable. And don't forget more about the wand from Rothier Magus. But later.